Hello, StarCraft fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Heart of the Swarm upload! This is a game between Toki the Bear and Fibonacci on Coda, the latter edition. In the top left side of the map, we have the Red Zerg player. It is Toki the Bear! And in the bottom right side of the map, we have the blue Protoss player. It is Fibonacci. All right, so this is a Heart of the Swarm replay. Sent to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com. It is Midrake Madness level around gold, platinum, or so. Somebody requested, hey, if I sent you a HOTS replay, would you cast it? And I said, you know what? You know what? Let's mix it up. Let's make this up a bit. We'll see what the response is here. If people are interested, interested in seeing more Heart of the Swarm stuff, or if they'd rather just stick to Legacy of the Void. And if, that, if that's the case, this may be the only one I actually put on the channel, but we will see. You'll notice this is Heart of the Swarm because of the smaller number of opening workers. We have six here. Six starting workers here. Droning up is Toki the Bear. This just means the early game is a little slower. A little bit slower here. Gateway coming up here. Hatch for Toki the Bear. Not anywhere near being able to be started. Spawning pool as well. Not anywhere close. Whereas we get like a sub one minute spawning pool in Legacy of the Void, I, which I really love. I know I've said that before, but I love how fast the game starts in Legacy of the Void. This is just, it just it takes a while. But casting it is hard to fill all this dead space and playing it is also a little bit weird. So just sit there and wait and wait and click and kind of get your APM up by doing different random stuff like clicking on your larva and back on your hatchery. Selecting all your workers. It's just kind of a... It's a slower, slower, more leisurely experience, maybe if that's what you're into. Anyway, Hatch first here in Hatch first in Heart of the Swarm. This is not something we saw a lot in Heart of the Swarm, just because cannon rushing was such a strong thing for Protoss. However, Fibonacci has not scouted. He has not scouted his opponent whatsoever, as this is a mid-rake madness game. We do not expect to see maybe excellent scouting. No mothership cores either. Man, what else are we missing here? We're missing adepts? Adepts don't exist. Disruptors do not exist. A lot, a lot of missing things, actually. Lurkers, right? Lurkers are not around. And no Ravagers, either, for Zerg. So those are the units that we're missing. As more come along, I'll have to think about it. Vipers are around. Ultras obviously still exist. Corruptors don't have the Caustic Spray ability. I guess I could list every change, but let's just... We'll go ahead and mention them as they become relevant to this game. How about that? Extractor Pool here for Toki the Bear. Which I'm pretty sure is a reference to Marijuana. Of some sort, I am a dad, but I am familiar with the marijuanas and some of the references therein. So just, uh, you can't pull one over my, my eyes. I am a little bit too, too woke for that stuff. All right, immediately saturating his extractor here is Toki the Bear. I just, I feel like casting this more slowly. Just because it's just, uh, we're four minutes in and this hatch isn't even done. Oh, the hatch is barely done. The hatch is done. Hooray. Hatch is done. Is that a cannon? Defensive cannon from Fibonacci. You know what? I have to imagine that gold, gold level in Heart of the Swarm, it might be a little different from gold level in Legacy of the Void. Here comes a Zealot, though. A Zealot coming in. Toki, what you making, man? Making it. Dude, get in there. Wreck some face. Kill a bunch of drones. There's nothing here to stop you. There's a queen that's going to come out in about 20 seconds. You get over there and you attack now, Fibonacci. Dude, <clears throat> what are you doing? I mean, this isn't even like a Forge first expand. This is like a one baser. Gateway Forge, Gateway Expand. I don't know what the Protoss player is doing. Lings came out. Did that... Oh, here's the queen, though. Here is the queen. More Lings here. And the Zealot just wasting his life. Hacking away at Zerglings, which... I mean, I guess he killed all of them, which is fine. I'm not going to complain about that. Can he get the rest of the... No! Gets killed. Does take five Zerglings, six Zerglings to take him down. Anyway, Toki the Bear just kind of hanging out. Just kind of hanging out. That queen did not assist whatsoever. I might actually reclassify this as Into the Void because these players... Um, reaction times aren't that great. Builds are really, really odd. The Protoss player, I don't know what. It's like it's trying to set up kind of for an expansion here, but it's not actually doing that. It's not necessarily rushing for a four gate or anything either. There's two gates here. There's a forge. There's a cybernetics core. I guess just worried about uh, six pools at this point is Fibonacci, but that's not that is not a concern that you need to have. Evolution chambers coming up for Toki the Bear. Roachhorn as well has exactly a Zergling and two queens for attacking units right now. For so really droning up, it's 30 to 22 total harvesters in favor of the Zerg player. Overlord here for Toki the Bear north of the base for Fibonacci. And um, it should probably be heading south to scout this out at some point. I mean, it's Zealots, it's Stalkers, Warpgate Research isn't even being started here by Fibonacci. Yep, this is an Into the Void game. 
Into the void. Three cannons. Okay, two cannons at the front and a zealot really, really worried about these attacks that are coming that are not coming. Toki the Bear is getting Spore Callers. You know how much I love Spore Callers, right? I do, I do like them a lot. But in the case where you haven't even attempted to scout your opponent seven minutes in, it's just, it's a waste. It is a waste of a drone. Bet you never thought you'd hear me say that, huh? That a Spore Crawler is a waste of a drone. It is, though. Dude, you don't know what your opponent's doing because you haven't even tried to get in there. You haven't sent your Scouting Overlord in. Scouting Probe comes in and gets killed by a Queen immediately. Immediately. Finally, three roaches coming in at 7 minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, plus one missile attack and plus one ground carapace as well for Toki the Bear. So not completely bereft of upgrades, which is very, very nice to see. Stalker Zealot moving out. And what is the slowest, slowest, like, two and a half gate pressure of all time? Warp Cat Research is coming in. Tenlings and a roach on the way. And I just, I don't, Fibonacci, I don't know what you're expecting to do with this here. Zealots, we're going to see a lot more prominently here. Some sentries. Wait for the sentries, man. Oh, Stalker, you is dead. You is dead, Stalker. Run. Run. Get out of there. Use your legs. To don't you... Turned around with about two hit points and got killed. The Roach is having a great time against the Zealots. I mean, if there was Micro here, it'd be better. But as it stands, you lost a Roach to the Zealots, which is probably fine. That is a reasonable thing. Lings do not have speed. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what I expected when I loaded this replay, but uh, I did not expect I did not expect Link Speed to be skipped. Stargate here for Fibonacci, and the expansion is coming up. Sentries there as well, throwing up another pylon, which uh, photon overcharge, not a thing either. You can't defend with photon overcharge, which is why these cannons exist. You don't need cannons with overcharge most of the time, unless you're dealing with like the things you need to detect, burrowed roaches and dark templar and things, but. Sentry count for Fibonacci is at about four. They're both spending their money pretty well. They're just having a hard time droning up and probing up. It's 35 to 27 harvesters here, about 10 minutes into the game. And the 11 minute roach rush was a thing in Heart of the Swarm. Stefano, Stefano perfected that and said, what up? We can have a maxed out army of roaches with about 50, 60 workers in 11 minutes. So this is not a function of Heart of the Swarm being a slower macro style. This is just a function of these guys being approximately I would say silver I would say silver the loading screen said gold but no nope this is definitely closer to silver as far as legacy of the void play is concerned void ray coming in from Fibonacci that could be a problem could be an issue nothing here can really shoot up there are some queens obviously for Toki the bear injects have actually been pretty good pretty good for Toki here I mean not not amazing but good good to this point more cannons coming in are you for serious? More cannons at the front. Fibonacci is turtling hard. Void Ray, go. Avenge. Avenge your lost stalker and zealot brethren. Go murder them in the face. Got some lings here hanging out in the middle of nowhere. That's not even on an attack path between these two bases. So I don't know where they're going. Is that plus two, plus two? Getting plus two, plus two for the roaches. Huh. For the roaches and the queens. That's it though, huh? Ravagers and lurkers are gone. Wow, that's crazy. That is crazy talk. And a Nidus Worm. Yay, a Nidus Worm coming in. All right, all right. I'm excited now. I'm excited about this replay. Nidus Worm coming in. You do need vision, which is why this Overlord is there. This reminds me of a build I used to do in Heart of the Swarm. It was basically like a two-base Speedling Nidus all in against Protoss. Because they'd wall off, right? they do the Forge Fast Expand and wall off and just probe so hard. Basically depending on sentries to hold this wall. But if you got a Nidus Worm up and got about 30 lings inside their main base, they were done. They were done. They couldn't do anything about that whatsoever. It was very fun. It was a very fun build to do. Uh, Protoss, if they saw the Nidus Worm building, could kill it in construction, which is not something you can, do, you can do currently in Legacy of the Void. But So if they were they were ready for it, right? Sometimes they were. Sometimes they were ready for that. Uh, then it was a little bit difficult to win, and often I didn't. He's not getting roach speed. He's not getting roach speed either. All right. All right, that's fine. Some lings at the front, some slow lings at the front, possibly to distract while the Nidus Worm is building. I'm okay with that if that is what is going on here. And, whoa, sneaky third. Ninja third base by Fibonacci. Top right. Top right. No real reason for the Zerg player to go over and check this thing out. Here come the slow lings, sacrificing themselves at the altar of we are going to distract you guys. There we go. Lings just, I don't think they're even on attack move. Maybe a little bit, but they all died pretty much instantly. Two of the cannons, the stalkers, sentries, and void rays. And here it is. Clickable, murderable, but you have to see it first. And here comes the Nidus Worm. 
Oh, that's such a wonderful sound for Zerg players. A bunch of roaches conga lining here into the main base, main mineral line, trying to... Their AI is a little messed up. You guys need to actually attack. There we go. Actually attacking, getting some shots off on these cannons. Voiders, do they have prismatic alignment? They do. They have prismatic alignment. Could be using that, not using that. Stalker is very smartly going after the Night Swarm. They get it. They get the Night Swarm. Hallucinating some Void Rays. I... So hallucinating void rays makes sense, right? If you're trying to scare the roaches back into the night swarm, but the night swarm is gone. So at this point, all they can do is keep attacking. What you want to do is hallucinate some zealots in or some stalkers in. So the roaches would waste attacks on imaginary units rather than actual units. Prismatic alignment is up. Can you en enable? You can do prismatic alignment on hallucinated void rays. That's cool. That is really cool. A wow came in from Fibonacci, by the way. So that definitely happened. Roaches <clears throat> here in this natural base. And uh, going after the natural nexus. Couple of roaches here remaining inside the main. No, there is a mother. No. Wait. Ah, oh, I'm so embarrassed. You people are like, dude, your memory is the worst. It is the worst. There were mothership cores. Mothership cores do exist. They do exist in Heart of the Swarm. You just completely forgot. All right, so they are here. Fibonacci, in my defense, did not actually make any until 15 minutes into the game. All right, so Zerg infestation has been cleaned up, but it is 40 to 13 total harvesters. A million hydrolisks are on the way from Toki the Bear. They do not have that muscular augments upgrade. They do. They be I mean, no, it's the two separate upgrades, right? <clears throat> Range plus one, movement, 25% faster off creep. So that's been combined into one right now and Legacy of the Void for muscular augments, but... Counterattack attempt for Fibonacci coming in with Void Rays. Not going to go well. We're just going to say it's not going to go well for him here. And Nidralisks popping on in and one Void Ray dead. They are so good at anti-air. They are like the ultimate anti-air time warp tossed on down. Is that the old time warp animation? It is. The old time warp animation. Just a bubble. Just a bubble. That's all it is. Not green. Not green whatsoever. I'm just, I'm surprised people still play Heart of the Swarm. It just weirds me out. How many, whoa, a lot of Hydras in this Nidus network now. A handful at the front for base defense, but he's going to try to Nidus again. There's a sentry here watching this corner of the base for Fibonacci. Making sure that doesn't happen again. Sneaky third still exists. I mean, I want to point out there are four workers here. I guess he's continuing to increase that worker count. Nidus Swarm attempt. Sentry, can the sentry kill this by itself? No, Tickle Cannon, not enough to take down this Nidus network as it is constructing. And there it goes. Hello, Hydralisks. This might be it. This might be all she wrote. Ah, oh, very sad about that, Fibonacci. A little bit too slow to respond. Hallucinated Colossus. There you go. That's what you need. Hallucinated Colossus. Nidus Worm does actually fall, though. Toki did not take care of that. But second Nidus Worm, back of Nidus, is here. Well played, Zerg Scum, says Fibonacci. <laughs> Uh, and that's it. Hydras are going to town with their Needle Spines. What is that attack called, actually? Needle Spines. Yep. Well played, says Toki the Bear. Lol, and that is it. Fibonacci is defeated. Toki the Bear was victorious, and his Protoss opponent has left the game. So we'll go ahead and give him his day. He wants he wants to keep murdering stuff for a while, so we'll wrap this up. So Alright, so that was um that was an into the void. Into the void. I don't know. Like the that's Maybe the Zerg player. Zerg player a little bit closer, maybe to gold, <clears throat> than our Protoss player, but definitely into the void level, I would say, overall in this one. So that's Heart of the Swarm for you guys. Maybe if there are some higher level players who are interested in sending in Heart of the Swarm stuff, maybe, maybe we can check that out. We will, uh, we'll give it a try. Maybe we'll send it to my screeners and see what they think about the next one, but... That is going to be it from me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Heart of the Swarm upload. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself. And so you must run And it's taken your heart And broken your
your soul You cannot go back Until you're made whole And you're running You can live A place you can love Is it just an illusion When push comes to shove There's a light upon you reason and a way to atone all around you the planets and stars you're lost in a maelstrom Into the void